Are you the type of person that can't finish games? At least games that you buy anyway, on Steam, let's say. Now, if you're like me, you probably envy those people. How much fun are they having finishing all those games? Well, today I'm here to help you with that problem. I recently transitioned into someone who does finish games, and it actually came down to two really simple ideas that I learned. Let me talk about it. Okay, so like I mentioned, today I'm going to help you become a committed gamer. Here's a little bit of background and a bit of history for you guys who don't know. So, I own a gaming channel, but what a lot of you don't know is that I started my Steam account only two years ago, almost to this day. Now, if you're a slightly older person and you've got kids, chances are your kids probably have Steam accounts older than mine. Now, this isn't to say that I'm not a gamer or haven't been in the past because it's been the opposite. I've been an avid gamer my whole life. The difference is that I've committed to a handful of games, probably you can count on one hand. Instead of a diversity, when a new game comes out, I wouldn't even be aware of it, I didn't care. So I was too busy playing other games, things like Diablo 1, 2, and 3, most notably, but also a lot of other stuff as well. Now, if you're a gamer like myself, then you tend to get fascinated by certain games. You know, you get caught up for a year or two. I think the best example of this it's a game that I didn't play, but World of Warcraft. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't get into World of Warcraft. I played it for three months, but I know people that, you know, committed their lives to it for like 10 years. That's totally fine. It's a game of choice. By the way, I just want to throw it out there. This excludes Mario Kart, Nintendo 64, um, Zelda, Mortal Kombat, having a Sega, having a Nintendo. I was one of those people as well. And uh, this, this is like past that kind of stuff. This is the gap in between that. The last console that I ever owned was a PlayStation. PlayStation 1. I used to play Tony Hawk's 2 and uh, Thrasher and Diablo 1 as well on the console. Believe it or not, that existed. It was hell fun. Now, something happened to me recently where I kind of figured it out and it was just a simple idea. So, I want to talk to you guys directly who don't finish games that often because it's very, very easy to transition and enjoy that feeling of completion, you know. It's a great, it's very rewarding to start a game and finish it. You get your money back out of the entertainment that you're purchasing, but just more importantly, you know, starting a project and finishing it. Now, the first problem is, is when you fall in love with a game for a year or two after the games that you play, you're comparing to that. You're trying to make those other games into what they're not. For example, you know, I played a lot of Diablo 2. I played for four or five years, not even thinking about other games. Mistake number one, don't buy a game you can't fully comprehend the style and genre. For example, Dark Souls 3 is coming out. Uh, what is it now? The 11th of this recording. So it's coming out tomorrow. Now, I'm a fan of this particular genre. I know when I buy it, what I'm going to get, it's going to be brutally hard. It's going to put me through hell. I'll probably get a lot of fun out of this game. But when I look at any shooter ever, I know I probably won't get into because it's not really my thing. I'd like it to be. I'd like more genres to be able to play, but I just don't get into them. I don't know what it is. It's kind of like a taste in music. You just like certain stuff. So I know I'm not going to buy the next AAA shooter game because I won't get into it. I'll probably play it for two or three hours, like I said earlier, and just, just not play it. But what about the games that are similar in genre that you probably will like and still don't finish anyway? Now, the hardest part about being in these shoes is that you love a game so much and you get burnt out of it and you do want to try and recreate that experience, that feeling in another title. Think about games like a project. All projects have a start and a finish date. Now that finish date for you might be when you're bored after a certain amount of time, or it might be the end of the game when there's nothing else left to play until DLC comes out. Now the way I actually solved this problem for myself, and it's not really a problem, but the way I actually solved this, I started buying games in a very kinesthetic way. So in other words, if I'm gonna buy this game, I'm actually going to finish it. Now the chances of me actually finishing a game become significantly higher the shorter it is. So first of all, I recommend that if you're going to buy a brand new game, fully comprehend the genre, pick a game that you know that you'll probably like, but also go for the games that are significantly shorter. You want to aim for something like, you know, eight to 10 hours, something very simple like that. Seems like a lot, but is actually easy to take on. What's really cool about this is that I found that this is where the indie genre really plays a significant role for me personally. I disliked indie games for a very long time. And uh, I found a new love for it because of this reason, 
they're actually quite easy to finish. So let's say, for example, the game's like 10 hours. The problem often lies with, fuck, I'm never going to be able to finish this game. You know, it lies directly with commitment. When you know a game is like 10 hours, your opinion is, I like this game. It's 10 hours. Yeah, I can totally do this. You know, 2.5 hour sessions or whatever. You can have four of them over a week and finish the game that easy. You can have four sessions and finish a game. It's kind of like when you Google a uh, similar band to such and such. And I don't know about you guys, but I do this all the time, probably once a week. You know, I love music. I listen to a lot of it. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I love this album. I want to hear more like it. So I'll like Google similar bands to, you know, insert band name here. And then quite often what happens is you get let down. It's like never as good uh, if you're like me anyway. But every now and then you will find something that is good. You might have to dig a little bit deeper. And then what happens is that second uh, discovery that you find becomes another classic in your head or another great game that you've played. You have to do a little bit more research. So always remember that, you know, if you're really committed to one game and you're like similar games to whatever, it's often never really the case, uh, but every now and then it is. Now, the reason why I wanted to make this video is because I feel like this actual mind frame about finishing games transcends just the gaming, uh, you know, the entertainment world in general. I feel like this is a very cool skill to have in your life. Uh, taking on brand new projects, taking on brand new experiences, because I've seen this in a pattern in my own life in general. And I know this is a little bit off topic, but I wanted to get into it anyway, because I feel like this is a must have skill in your life anyway. Uh, coming from someone who's, you know, done a lot of things and, and you know, lived his life pretty well to, the, to this point anyway. So when I was 19 years old, I finished the first book I'd ever done in my whole entire life. I kid you not, uh, I used to hate reading with a passion and I still actually do hate reading and I probably only fully read one or two books. But here's the thing, I tried an audio version for the first time. And I absolutely fell in love with it. Now, after reading this book uh, when I was younger, consuming it, I should say, I've done one book every single week on and off with patches here and there, but one book every single week to this day. So I went from someone that hated reading and had this new platform of consuming media to like just, just ridiculous amount of bibliography, I guess you could say, on so many different authors and just loving it. And it's a passion of mine right now. I still fucking hate reading, but um, it's a great thing. Now, the reason why I'm mentioning this is because there's two things that are directly related, subtle changes of opinion that makes the world of difference. I hate reading. It's a 15 hour audio book. I can smash through this in two to four days while I'm at work and learn something that I really want to learn about. It's exactly the same as gaming. You know, a game might be 15 hours. I love the genre. I love the gameplay. Uh, I can totally commit to this. I'm going to be able to do it in, you know, three or four sessions and have a great time and feel that sense of, you know, I completed this. I did this and uh, I enjoyed it and had a lot of fun rather than getting to that two or three hour point might be less with yourself and saying, oh man, I'm never going to be able to finish this game. It's going to take, do I have 20 hours left? Whatever. I actually mentioned this in a previous video. Check out a website called uh, How Long To Beat. This was a massive change for me knowing that, you know, oh, this game's actually only going to take. 10 hours or 20 hours or however many hours it is, oh man, I can totally commit to this game. It makes you feel way more comfortable. You are actually going to finish it if you think about it in this way. And what's funny is that I see, uh, for example, like in The Witcher 3 when it first came out, 200 hours plus, and a lot of people care about it. They're like, man, I want this game better be 40 hours plus and it better be 30 hours plus. I'm the opposite. I'm like, I want a really good game that's as short as possible, unless it's a a multiplayer game where it's like Rocket League, Diablo 3, uh, you know, like the up and coming Overwatch. Unless it's that type of game, I'm like, man, I want to get hundreds of hours. I want to get 300, 1000 hours out of this game minimum. But if it's a story based game, you guys know what I mean. I actually like shorter games that are more condensed and interesting rather than big open worlds that has a lot of filler in it anyway. Anyway, guys, this is a little bit more personal than my other stuff and a little bit off topic as well, but. I really feel like the experience of being able to go through this transition 
uh, as a gamer to learn this stuff. This has really transitioned over to my life. You know, say, you know, you might want to take on a career change or something like that and you can work it out. How many hours does it take for me to do? And this is a very valuable skill and maybe someone out there uh, is going to hear this and make some pretty big changes in their life. I really feel like this is impactful. Uh, it was for me anyway. Hopefully I translated that in the video. Thanks for joining me as always.